Well, thank you so much. Well, good morning and welcome to the Church by the Seas worship service this morning. I'm Reverend Barbara Asinger, and along with my husband, Reverend Rob Asinger, we want to invite you to connect today with the Holy through the inspiration of word and music, contemplation, and consideration. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Jin Yin Kwai La. Ah. That means Happy New Year oh, in Chinese. Of course, of course. Well, Happy New Year to you. Of course, it was the Chinese New Year this week. Indeed. And many across the nation and world celebrated that Chinese New Year. And did you know that in the Chinese tradition, sky lanterns, like the one here above the oh, altar, yeah, beautiful. were used in religious and secular ceremonies dating back all the way to the year 25. Wow. The lanterns, they act as hot air balloons rising into the sky, sending light to the heavens. Oh, how beautiful. Well, it's funny how light is a symbol in so many traditions and cultures of hope and peace and possibility and even new beginnings like the new year. Well, this morning, let us imagine that we all have lanterns of light and let all of our worry and concern, our fear and struggle, our unanswered questions be lifted into the heavens, allowing God to hold them for this time. How beautiful. This morning, I invite you all to take a deep breath and again, and be present and give yourself the gift that is Sabbath. As we listen to our opening hymn, Come and Find a Quiet Center. Come and find a quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are free. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Clear our eyes that we can see. All the things that really matter Be at peace and simply be Silence is a friend who claims us Cools the heat and slows the pace God it is who speaks and names us Knows our being touches base, making space within our thinking, lifting shades to show the sun, raising courage when we're shrinking, finding scope for faith begun. In the Spirit let us travel, open to each other's pain let our loves and fears unravel celebrate the space we gain there's a place for deepest dreaming there's a time for heart to care in the spirit's lively scheming there is always room to spare. Well, good morning once again. We have several announcements I'd like to draw your attention to. The first is that on Sunday, February 27th, our youth are hosting the worship service, and we hope you will watch. Youth are one of the groups that have suffered the most during this pandemic, and our youth are remarkable. Despite the challenges they have faced, they will inspire you. So please watch them and have your friends watch as well. Send a message telling them how amazing they are because they are truly amazing. And of course, we will be returning in person 
for worship on March 6th. We will be meeting in the St. Regis Ballroom. No need for reservations, but masks are required for everyone over two years of age. And we have a change this year. Our worship through music will not take place on Palm Sunday, but due to some scheduling issues with the St. Regis, it will occur on March 20th with a very special guest soloist, Elizabeth Caballero. The Wall Street Journal said, Miss Caballero is a find. Her opulent soprano rings freely and lyrically throughout her reign. This worship will be amazing and will definitely enhance our spirits for the Lenten season. So join us and share your faith and community with others. Now, let us be in prayer together. God of all our days and nights, be with us this day. Let your spirit wash over us, bringing peace to our hearts and to our minds. Guide our thoughts and help us to hear you, to feel you, to know you. Help us to begin to discover the love you have for us as we discover love of neighbor and of self. Grant us, O oh God, an open heart this morning so we may find a quiet center, a place of calm, a place to hear you guiding us forward. Amen. Let us now listen to this piece of music.
Thank you. Well, meditation quiets the body and spirit, and it calms the mind. It connects us with the here and now. Future thinking may have many benefits, but if you add a pandemic to that thinking, we begin to realize how little control we truly have, and so we must regroup. But as people of faith, rather than attempting to do all of this on our own, we must engage God. The sacraments are one of the gifts that we are given to connect with the holy. Communion is an outward sign of God's grace. Sacraments reconnect us to God through Christ. They infuse us, our spirits. And like water to the thirsty and bread to the hungry, communion nurtures us in body and mind and spirit by reminding us of our connection to the Creator. Communion asks us to humble ourselves before God and remember how Jesus did the same. It reminds us of how at times that connection with God requires sacrifice, openness, and a willing heart. Meditation allows us to hear God's desires while the sacraments give us the grace and strength to carry them out. Let us, before our meditation, take in the grace, the bounty, the beauty that is the sacrament of communion.
We invite you to join with us in communion. Perhaps you can get a piece of bread or some juice or water and partake. The only requirement is that we have an open and a willing heart and the desire to be closer to God. Let us now pray. Holy God, we come to this table to give thanks, to remember, to partake, to be refreshed and renewed. We come remembering that you are the one that makes all things new. And we pray that you make us new as we eat and drink here at your table. Amen. Amen. We remember anew these words, these acts of Jesus, that on the night that he was betrayed, he shared a meal with his friends, the disciples. And at the meal, he took a loaf of bread. He gave thanks for it, and he blessed it. And then he broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, gathered with his friends, he took the cup, he blessed it and gave thanks and said, take and drink all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, remember me. Let us pray. Gracious God, send your spirit upon this bread and upon this juice that it may be for us like your own spirit. And as we partake, may it renew and refresh us in body and mind and spirit. Amen. The cup of salvation and the body of Christ. Something ain't right, I will let you know. Like the paint that's drying on a heart that's broke. Let me carry your burden. Get you back on a high when you're feeling low. When the weight's too heavy, but you won't let. sit with you a while. Pretty soon I'll see you smile and you know you will. No matter how much you're hurting right now, you know that everything will change in time. So let me carry your burden. Let me carry your Your mouth's on fire, but your mind is cold. And your fan in flames that won't keep you warm. Come to me, my brother, and I will sit with you a while. Pretty soon I'll see you smile, and you know you will. Oh, no matter much you're hurting right now. You know that everything will change in time. Let me carry your burden, oh brother mine. It'll quench your fire, wash away your stains. Oh, yes, it will. Come to me, my brother, and I will sit with you a while. Pretty soon I'll see you smiling, yes.
yes you will Oh it don't matter how much you're hurting right now You know that everything will change in time I just might see it in another life I got no dog here in the fight I can carry your burden, no oh brother mine Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, after these last few years, many of us may be having difficulty feeling joy. To discover joy again when we have been challenged, to find God when God seems distant, may require us to change our perspectives. In the Gospel of John, we hear these words, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And from Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Well, joy, from Jesus' perspective, is concerned with unity and mutuality. It is concerned with being right with our neighbors. That is the commandment that he leaves us, to love one another as I have loved you. Well, in these tumultuous times where division is growing in so many elements of life, it is no wonder that joy may feel elusive. But what is clear is this. Joy is related to our closeness to our Creator and our closeness to one another. To find and hold on to joy, regardless of our human condition, may require us to shift our perspective and also our spiritual practices. After the vaccine, we all assumed we would be back to normal. And when that did not occur, many became frustrated and angry and overwhelmed. Joy seemed to elude us once again, and we began to focus on the failings of others. Well, we are invited by Jesus in the scripture to develop a sense of understanding and care for and compassion for those we may not agree with, for those we might even feel threaten our welfare or that we would call enemy. How much time do we spend trying to change the perspectives of others versus trying to change our own. The division we feel today and in our world may be in part due to our unwillingness to love our enemy. Wanting to be right or feeling we are may at times far outweigh our willingness to carry out the commandments of Christ. And then, if we don't, how could we possibly love our neighbor? How can we move from division to unity and mutuality? How can we offer to others the support Jesus spoke of 
and find joy again, a complete joy. Well, there was a little girl who told her Sunday school teacher when asked what she was drawing, I am drawing God, she said. Well, the teacher replied, no one really knows what God looks like. And the little girl responded, don't worry, they will all know when I'm finished. Well, if we desire to see God like this little girl, maybe we need to incorporate new spiritual practices. We can color if we'd like, but we can also consider meditation. In prayer, we expect express the needs and concerns we have for our lives and the lives of others. We ask God for help. In meditation, we listen and God begins to shift our understanding and helps us to know how to move forward into the world. In meditation, God can change our perceptions, our understanding. It is in this humble, quiet practice that we can begin to open to a greater acceptance, a greater understanding, a greater sense of compassion. It is then that we begin to grasp the joy that Jesus speaks of, that complete joy. Changing our perspective through meditation also means accepting our humanity and recognizing our limitations in understanding God's will. It helps us to open our minds and thoughts in new ways. In finding joy in keeping Christ's commandments in these difficult times, we must consider the idea of new spiritual practices, and one of them is meditation. So let us begin. Breath is our connection to our Creator. And often, we don't take the time to stop and just take some cleansing, clearing, gentle breaths. So let us breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And relax our bodies and open our minds. Now I want you to choose a problem with God, something that's weighing on your mind and interfering with your joy. And breathe. And feel God close to you, guiding you, supporting you, helping you. And as you see the problem, consider changing your lens and seeing it from a greater distance. How might things change? Now see it closer. See it from God's perspective. What do you notice? What is new? Even when we consider the problems of health, the problems of family, or struggles we are having at work, or in the world, or with others' perspectives, let us breathe and consider them. What must be their experiences, their understanding? What must have brought them to that place? Can we see them as a child of God? Can we refrain from anger and frustration? Can we wish them peace 
and health and a beautiful and blessed life. And if we cannot, can we give them to God and ask God to help our heart and remove our frustration and anger? Can we love them enough to do that? And as we consider each of the people in our lives, in all the ways that we are frustrated or disturbed. And we start to look at it in new ways, from new perspectives. Can we begin to shift just a little? Can we begin to forgive and find compassion and be open to the child of God that they are? Can we let go of being right in order to be close to God? Can we ask Jesus to help to heal our spirits, our minds, our perspectives? Let us breathe in God's light and breathe out our desires. Let us breathe in possibility and breathe out all that interferes with the light and the love that is Christ.
Let us now join together in the spirit of prayer. We give thanks, O God, for the gifts we have been given. We remember those who suffer and we ask your mercy upon them. We remember those who are ill and ask your grace surround them. We pray for Amy and Mark, for John, for Kim, for Helga, Joan Mary, Bob, and for the loss of Audra's mother-in-law, Maria. May God's perpetual light shine upon her and grant her peace. And we remember those forgotten, those struggling with mental health issues. Grant us compassionate hearts, O God, that we can see and hear those around us. We pray for our own concerns and ask to feel you holding us as we listen in silence. Let us join together now in the night prayer taken from the New Zealand prayer book. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you so much, Annalise. Let us pray. As you go into the day, remember to breathe and seek holy moments. To give thanks for all that God offers us. To practice as a way of finding peace. Go knowing you are never alone. God is with you. And as you go, go willing to illuminate the way for others through prayer and quiet contemplation, through love of all. Go now in peace to love and to serve God. Amen. Amen. And so we hope you enjoyed today's meditation. We do a weekly meditation that happens on Tuesday. Join us anytime and invite a friend. And now let us listen to our postlude. Have a blessed and beautiful week.